Welcome back to the Reflector channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about the Orion Starblast four and a half inch reflector telescope. These two telescopes are exactly the same. The only difference is this one comes on a Dobsonian mount, this one comes on an equatorial mount. I've been using both of these for the past few weeks and I can tell you that I really like the Dobsonian mount. The equatorial mount is just, well, it's a bit wobbly. I'll, I'll leave it there. But you don't have to take my word for it. This telescope here is the one you'll see if you get involved in the library telescope program. That's basically where you go to a library and you can check out a telescope like a book. Now those telescopes have been modified a little bit to make them a little bit more hardy for the general public use purpose. Now optically, these telescopes are fantastic. These are great beginner telescopes. They range from $200 to $270. It depends on whether you get the Dobsonian or the Equatorial and also what accessories you get with the kit. Optically, they're really nice. They're both four and a half inch parabolic mirrors. There's no Bird jones corrector in these and the images that you get from these are surprisingly good. This is also the perfect size to take with you when you go out camping. But there's only one problem. The focuser on these telescopes is the worst focuser I've ever seen. And it really lets down the high quality of these telescopes. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a super quick fix to turn that wobbly, rickety focuser into a top-notch focuser. Let's get started. All right, so here is the tube. It has a standard rack and pinion focuser. It's pretty smooth, actually. There's only one problem in that the silver part, the basically the focuser tube, is super wobbly and sloppy. Let me see if I can get a better view of that. That's, uh, that's actually really bad. So we're going to tighten that up a little bit. I'm going to show you a trick on how to do that. The first step is to remove the silver tube from this. And you do that by removing these two Phillips head screws. And I should mention that the grease that they use on these is super sticky and super gooey. I'm going to pull the wheels off while holding this. Uh, there's the little spring. And we're just going to set this aside. And this should just pull out. All right, now let's take a look at what we've got here. If you look in the tube, there's kind of a plastic corrugated uh, glide section right there and it's only right there but the thing is that this tube is slightly too large so we're going to take up some of that space we're going to do that by wrapping the tube in tape let me show you what i mean we're going to take some painter's tape and make a nice straight cut by the way this is a two inch tape and we're going to cut off a section that's long enough to go around the tube once. Just estimate. And we're going to start at the rack right here. And we're going to start about uh, an eighth of an inch away from the end. Like that. And let's wrap it around. We'll take it up back to the rack. And there's a couple ways to do this. If you have an X-Acto knife, you can run it down this little edge. Or if you have scissors, you can do the same thing. Push it in there. You're going to get grease on your fingers, so be careful. All right. Now I'm going to try this, but I've found that it usually takes two two pieces of tape. So you have to put it in kind of careful so that the tape doesn't catch on this white corrugated plastic right there. All right, so that, that actually is, that took up quite a bit. That's pretty good. But I think we're gonna need a little bit more. This time let's go about halfway around. We'll make it a nice tight fit. There 
It's about halfway. Make sure everything's pressed down. All right. Oh, that's okay. That's much better. That's a really tight fit. That's much tighter. Look at that. There's no slop. There's no play. All right. So let's go ahead and put the gear back in. There you go. Look at that. The slop is virtually gone just by using painter's tape. You may want to experiment by putting the tape higher up on the focuser shaft. It just, uh, you know, depends on uh, how well it works for you. Uh, most of the time I found that those, the one full layer and then the half layer works pretty good. But right now, this is a fantastic optical telescope and now it has a great focuser. It's amazing that a little bit of painter's tape can make both of these telescopes work at their optimum performance. If you're interested in either of these, I have their product page links down at the bottom. And while those links are loading, take a look at one of these videos. This one's a good one too. Thanks for watching and clear skies.